So let's talk about your gear yeah. now, and especially this guitar, which is unusual looking. <laughs> it is. It's the first albino guitar. What would you like to know? Well, so you said, hey, I need a white guitar, and then mm-hmm. one appeared. <laughs> Magic. Um, I, no, uh, so Ovation um, was kind enough. So this is my signature guitar. They were kind enough to take one and paint it white. So it's very... Um, it's they very, just spray paint it? Yeah, well, it's very <laughs> even. I mean, we, we could have done that, but um, it wouldn't have been as... as yeah. As even, um, it does have a little chip, but um, and of course the neck, it's wearing off on the frets, but I expected that. Um, but you know, and when you're seeing it lit up, it looks amazing. I mean, you don't see any of the imperfections. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so, does the neck feel different? It all feels a little Fret bit different. Board. It all feels a little yeah. taut. I mean, just the tiniest bit heavier. Um, the 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 back of the neck is is different just because it has this. A different kind of coating. Other than that, it pretty much plays and operates the same. I mean, as the strings have worn off the paint on the frets, it's pl- it's starting to play better. Yeah. Um, I think initially it was kind of a debate of like, well, do we paint the frets or do we not? How's it going to change the tone? It certainly changed the tone, but it didn't make it unplayable and it, and it didn't yeah. make it something that was just hideous sounding. Um, it's just been a change, but I have noticed that the more I play, <laughs> the better it is because the paint's kind of coming right. off. And you said you use pedals, like what, yeah. what do you use with it? So for the show, I have a Morley Wah pedal. Um, I have uh, the Moog Ring Mod, the Mini Fugger, Mini Fugger Ring, Ring Mod pedal with an expression pedal. I've got the um, Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine, which is amazing. I only use those like twice. I have like four pedals that I use for one song. Um, I've got an OCD, I've got a, a rat distortion going into an OCD overdrive. That's going into line six DL4, um, where I have several preset delays. The star of the show is the Strymon Big Sky um, reverb. There's so many good reverbs on that, and I've got them um, pre-programmed, so I switch through them throughout the show. And then I have, I have a tiny, one of those Boss Mini Loop Station things that I do a tiny bit of looping at the end. Um, but that's mainly it. The, the delays and the reverbs are what um, is, uh, you know, that's what I'm running with mainly. Yeah. Sorry, my stomach was grumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I must be hungry. <laughs> it's lunchtime, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, um, so w- the, the show sort of builds an intensity, right? Yes. And so do you just add more effects and everything to just kind of... Kind of. I mean, bring you to I, another place. I, there's several places where I don't use any effects at all, or there's a backing track, or there's something. Um, but by the end of it, it it you're hearing a bit more than you did in the beat. Although I don't know that that's actually true. I think it's um, it's it's an arc. You know, things go up and things go down, and things change, mm-hmm. and it's like a storyline. And um, I think that when people leave, you th- you have no idea what it is that just happened, but it, you feel very happy nonetheless. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. Any other gear that you want to mention? Let's or? see. Let's think about that. Um, when you use this guitar for the whole show, for the right? whole show, so no guitar changes. No guitar changes. Um, you know, there's so much happening. So the one thing that's actually been great is, uh, in the beginning, I was looking at all kinds of. Um, MIDI pickup solutions and several, I think Fishman sent me their model. A lot of, um, I, I kind of was thinking about how am I going to get, because we had a lot of MIDI control that we're using. And um, ultimately, there's a software that's very new at the time, a year ago, but um, it's called MIDI Guitar. And it takes a dry guitar signal and it translates it into MIDI notes. And it's very accurate, um, mm. surprisingly so. So that's been a pretty key, um, important. Um, elements of the show in the you know in the main computer that we use, and that controls the visual. Well, part, that or? that translates the guitar into MIDI. Then we take that MIDI signal, we put it into a program called VDMX, which is VDMX is controlling the show. That's really where right. the show has been built. Um, and but the MIDI guitar is saying, you know, hey, if she plays whatever that note is, yeah. you know, or C three, then you play, you know, this particular clip plays. And so that's part of the show. And um, other parts, we don't use the MIDI signal, but we're, we're just using a decibel level. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, the louder it is, the louder I play, the brighter something you see is. Um, and that happened several times. So when you're playing, when you're improvising, does that mean different visuals are coming up? Yes, that, that is exactly right. So for certain, there's a certain, um, the third song is called Notes and Colors. And basically, I play a note, and the first color that you see is this spiral that plays, and I'm able to control them. I can even kind of, you know, play them, and I can take, you know, they'll end up on my hand, and I can make it look like I'm placing them on the guitar. It's really beautiful. And, you know, and I only discovered that, like, last night. So there's a lot to learn. I'm learning how to play the show still. There's so much possibility. Also, I use the MIDI um, in that song... I'm using it on the bass notes on um, on this lower octave to tr- control the color wash that's on the screen behind me. So it's this kind of um, this it's like diamonds that are kind of moving, but there's always a different color wash, and I can change it from blue to purple to red just based on what I'm playing. Wow, it's cool. I mean, there's that's so like much, a whole another dimension. I know though. there's so yeah. much potential, and I yeah. really think that. I'm looking forward to the the next show, the next incarnation, and exploring that a lot further. Because then you can build on what you. Yeah, or um, well, yeah. you know, just being able to have yeah. so much control visually. I've never had that, mm-hmm. and um, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah! Wow! Very cutting edge of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're touring. Um, what's next? You're touring the Northeast. Toward the northeast. In the just, winter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Silly you. Silly me. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm going to the West Coast in April. March is more about um, doing some press and getting uh, some other. I have a couple of other shows. I'm playing with a string quartet, Ethel, and they actually make an appearance on two tracks of the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, so I'll be uh, doing some more writing for them. Yeah, I've got a lot going on. I've, there's there's many many little things in the works that mm-hmm. I have to get organized about, and then of course parenting, which is which is fun. Yeah. And um, yeah, but then back to the West Coast in April, and then a couple things around in May, and on and on. You know, right. so it goes. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me.